Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Shingo, and we have been attempting to escape reality with The Warriors, Fire and Ice, which is the second book in the series. I apologize about not uploading the last couple days. Um, my mother actually fell, and she wound up in the ER. And I have been texting with my uh, father, and this is actually the first time that I am out of state and completely away that something like this has happened to uh, my mom. So I've been a little bit busy. I apologize. And with this country being a dumpster fire that it is, I feel like cat drama is less stressful. In real life. So, with that in mind, we are still in the middle of chapter one. We're still getting started. Um, if you're new to the series, hi. I encourage you to go ahead and check out uh, my other videos to get caught up. We are... Fireheart is uh, it's essentially going through the things that have happened. Um, and his great desire that he really needs to speak to Blue Star about Tiger Claw's treachery. So, here we go. A glimpse of gray fur on the other side of the clearing told Fireheart that Blue Star had emerged from her den alone. He scrambled to his paws, but the Thunder Clan leader leaped straight up onto the high rock and called to the clan, Fireheart lashed his tail impatiently. Graystripe's ears flicked excitedly as he heard Blue Star's call. A naming ceremony? He meowed. It must be Longtail's it must be Longtail getting his first apprentice. He's been dropping hint for days. He bonded over to join the cats gathering at the edge of the clearing and, still itching with frustration, Fireheart followed. A small, black and white kit padded into the clearing. His soft paws made no sound on the hard earth. He walked towards the high rock with his pale eyes lowered, and Fireheart almost expected to see him tremble. There was something in the slope of this kid's shoulders that made him seem too young and timid to be an apprentice. Longtail won't be impressed. Fireheart thought, remembering Longtail's scorn when Fireheart had arrived at the camp for the first time himself. The warrior had taunted him viciously on his first day with the clan, mocking his kitty pet origins. Fireheart had disliked, Long disliked Longtail since. From this day forward, Blue Star meowed, staring down at the kit, until... He has earned his warrior name. This apprentice will be called Swiftpaw. Swiftpaw. There was no flash of determination in the eyes of the black and white kit as he looked up at his leader. Instead, his amber eyes were wide with anxiety. Fireheart turned his head as Longtail padded towards his new apprentice. Blue Star spoke again. Longtail? You were Darkstripe's apprentice. He taught you well, and you have become a fierce and loyal warrior. I hope you will pass some of these qualities on to Swiftpaw. Fireheart searched Longtail's face for an expression of disdain as he had looked down at Swiftpaw, but the warrior's eyes softened as he met his new apprentice's gaze gently the two clan cats touched noses. It's okay, you're doing fine, Longtail murmured encouragingly. Yeah, right, Fireheart thought bitterly. Just because he's clan born, Longtail sure didn't welcome me like that. He glanced around the rest of the clan and felt a pang of resentment as they began to murmur congratulations to the new apprentice. What's up with you? whispered Graystripe. That'll be us one day. Fireheart nodded, suddenly 
cheered by the thought of getting his own apprentice one day, he pushed away his resentment. He was part of ThunderClan now, and surely that was all that mattered? The next night brought the full moon. Fireheart knew he should be looking forward to his first gathering as a warrior, but he was still determined to find a chance to tell Bluestar everything he knew about Tiger Claw, and the thought of it lay like a cold stone in his stomach. Have you got maggot gun or something? meowed Gray straight beside him. You're pulling some very weird faces today. Fireheart looked at his friend, wishing he could confide in him, but he had promised to leave Graystripe out of it. I'm fine, he meowed. Come on, I hear Blue Star calling. The two cats trotted over to the group assembling in the clearing. Blue Star dipped her head to acknowledge their arrival. <clears throat> then she turned and led the cats out of the camp. Fireheart paused while the other cats scrambled past him up the steep trail that led to the forest above. This journey might give him just enough time to speak to Blue Star, and he wanted to gather his thoughts. Are you coming? Graystride's voice called down. Yep. Fireheart flexed his powerful hind legs and began to leap from boulder to boulder, leaving the camp behind. At the top, he paused to catch his breath his sides heaving. The forest stretched away before him and beneath his paws, he could feel the crisp crackle of newly fallen leaves. Silver pelt glittered in the sky like a morning dew scattered on black fur. Fireheart thought of his first journey to four trees with tiger claw and Lionheart, and he felt a pang of sadness as he remembered Lionheart. Graystripe's mentor and Thunderclan's deputy between Redtail and Tigerclaw had been a warm-hearted golden warrior. He'd been killed in battle and Tigerclaw had taken his place. On Fireheart's first visit to Four Trees, Lionheart had taken the apprentice on a roundabout route through tall pines, past sunning rocks, and along the river clan border. Tonight, Blue Star would lead them straight through the heart of ThunderClan territory. Fireheart could see her already disappearing into the undergrowth, and he charged after the party of cats. Blue Star was at the front, next to Tiger Claw. Fireheart ignored Graystripe's surprised meow and caught up with the clan leader. Blue Star, he called panting as he drew up his arm. May I talk to you? Blue Star glanced at him and nodded. Take the lead, Tiger Claw, she meowed. She let her pace slow, and Tiger Claw bounded past her. The other cats followed the dark tabby without question as he raced on through the undergrowth. Blue Star and Fireheart dropped into a steady trot, and within a moment, they were alone. The path emerged from the thick ferns into a small clearing. Blue Star leapt onto a fallen tree and sat down, curling her tail over her front paws. What is it, Fireheart? she asked. Fireheart hesitated, suddenly struck by doubt. Blue Star was the cat who had encouraged him to leave his kitty pet life and join the clan. Since then, she had trusted him time and time again when other cats had questioned his loyalty to a clan whose blood he didn't share. What would she say when Fireheart told her that he lied? about Ravenpaw. Speak, Blue Star ordered as the paw steps of the other Thunderclan cats faded into the distance. Fireheart took a deep breath. Ravenpaw's not dead. Blue Star's tail twitched in surprise, but she listened silently as Fireheart continued. Graystripe and I took him to Windclan's hunting grounds. I, I think he may have joined Barley. Barley was a loner, not a forest cat, but not a kitty pet. Either he lived on a two-leg farm that lie on the route to High Stones, a sacred place for all cats in the forest. The ThunderClan leader stared past Fireheart into the depths of the forest. Fireheart searched her face anxiously, trying to read her expression. Was she angry? 
but he could see no anger in her wide blue eyes. After several long moments, Blue Star spoke. I am glad to hear that Ravenpaw is still alive. I hope he is happier living with Farley than he was in the forest. But, but he was born into Thunder Clan, Fireheart stammered, taken aback by his leader's calm acceptance of Ravenpaw's departure. That doesn't necessarily mean he was suited to clan life, Blue Star pointed out. After all, you aren't clan-born, yet you've become a fine warrior. Ravenpaw may find his true path elsewhere. But he didn't leave Thunderclan because he wanted to, Firepaw protested. It was impossible for him to stay. Impossible? Blue Star rested her blue gaze on him. What do you mean? Blue Star looked down at the ground. Well, Blue Star prompted. Fireheart's mouth was dry. Ravenpaw knew a secret about Tiger Claw, he croaked. I think Tiger Claw was planning to kill him, or else turn the clan against him. Blue Star's tail flicked from side to side and Fireheart saw her shoulder stiffen. Why would you think that? What was this secret that Ravenpaw knew? Fireheart answered reluctantly, meeting her stern expression as boldly as he dared. That Tiger Claw killed Redtail in the battle with RiverClan. Redtail had been the ThunderClan leader, uh, ThunderClan deputy before Lionheart and Fireheart had never met him, but he knew Redtail had been deeply respected by all the clan. Blue Star's eyes narrowed. A warrior would never kill another of his clan. Even you should know that. You've lived with us long enough. Fireheart recoiled at her words, flattening his ears. It was the second time tonight she referred to his kitty pet roots. Blue Star went on. Tiger Claw reported that it was River Clan's deputy, Oakheart, who killed Redtail. She mailed, Ravenpaw must be mistaken. Did he actually see Tiger Claw kill Redtail? Fireheart nervously flicked his tail, stirring the leaves behind him. He said he did. And you know this by saying that. You were questioning Redtail's honor. Because if he must have been the cat that was responsible for Oakheart's death, one deputy would never kill another in battle. Not if it could possibly be avoided. And Redtail was the most honorable warrior I have ever known. Blue Star's eyes clouded with pain. Fireheart felt a pang of dismay that he should hurt her memory of her former deputy, even if unintentionally. I cannot account for Redtail's actions, he murmured. I only know that Ravenpaw truly believes Tiger Claw was responsible for Redtail's death. Blue Star sighed, relaxed her shoulders. We all know Ravenpaw has a vivid imagination, she meowed gently, her eyes sympathetic. He was badly injured in battle, and he left before the fighting was over. Can you be sure he didn't fill the parts he missed? Before Fireheart could reply, a yowl echoed under the forest, through the forest, and Tiger Claw bounded out of the undergrowth. His eyes flickered suspiciously over Fireheart for a moment before he addressed Blue Star. We're waiting for you at the border. Blue Star nodded. Tell them we'll be there in a moment. Tiger Claw dipped his head turned and raced back through the ferns. As Fireheart watched him disappear, Blue Star's words echoed in his mind. She was right. Ravenpaw did have a strong imagination. Fireheart remembered his first gathering when apprentices from every clan had hung on Ravenpaw's words as he described the battle of the River Clan. He hadn't mentioned Tiger Claw then. Fireheart jumped at Blue, as Blue Star stood. Are you going to bring Ravenclaw back to the clan? He asked, 
suddenly afraid. He had caused even more trouble for his friend. Blue Sky gazed deep into Fireheart's eyes. He is probably happier where he is, she meowed quietly. For now, we will let the clan carry on believing he is dead. Fireheart stared back at her, his eyes wide with shock. Blue Star was going to lie to the clan. Tiger Claw is a great warrior, but he's very proud, Blue Star went on. It'll be easy for him to accept that his apprentice died in battle rather than run away. And it will be better for Ravenpaw, too. Because Tiger Claw might go looking for him? Fireheart dared to ask. Was it possible Blue Star believed him? Even just a tiny bit? Blue Star shook her head with a flash of impatience. No! Tiger Claw might be ambitious, but he's not a murderer. Ravenpaw will be better remembered as a dead hero than a live coward. Tiger Claw's call sounded again, and Blue Star jumped down from the log and disappeared into the ferns. Fireheart cleared the tree trunk in one leap and raced after his leader. He caught up with her at the edge of a stream and watched as she crossed, jumping from stone to stone to the other side. Fireheart followed carefully, his mind whirling. The knowledge about Redtail's death had been resting heavily on his shoulders for days. And now that he finally told Blue Star, then nothing had changed. The clan leader clearly didn't think Tiger Claw was capable of cold-blooded murder. And worst of all, Fireheart himself had begun to doubt whether Ravenpaw had been telling the truth. He leaped onto the far bank and charged on through the undergrowth. Fireheart skidded to a halt behind Blue Star as they reached the other Thunderclan cats. The group had paused at the top of the slope that led down to four trees. The giant oaks where cats from the four clans of the forest met in peace at each full moon. Fireheart's fur prickled as he felt Tiger Claw watching him. Did the Dark Warrior suspect what had passed between him and Blue Star? Fireheart shook his head to clear his mind and tried to think like Blue Star. Of course Tiger Claw would be interested in what Fireheart had said to Blue Star. He was the clan deputy. So he would want to know anything that might affect the clan. Fireheart looked again at Tiger Claw. The dark tabby was staring down the slope, his ears pricked and alert. The cats around him shuffled their paws in anticipation. Blue Star lifted her nose, sniffed the air. Fireheart sensed a tightening of muscles, prickling of fur, and then Blue Star signaled with a flick of her tail. Thunderclan cats plunged down the slope towards the gathering. Chapter 2. We'll end it there. So I guess we got the big answer. Blue Star didn't believe him. So I'm going to ask the question instead. Do you think Blue Star will believe it? Do you believe it? Do you think Tiger Claw is capable of such a treacherous act? Uh, what about Red Tail? We know nothing about this character, but everyone greatly honors this person and says this person was good. Either way, Miss Crucifoot, what do you think is going to happen at the gathering? Wind Clan is still missing, by the way. And what do you think Shadow Clan will have to say at this gathering? This is the first gathering without Broken Star. So, either way, I'll leave it at that. Please be safe out there, okay? There might be some protesting stuff going on. Roe versus Wade was officially overturned. Be safe out there, okay? I hope you have a good day.